Hello everybody and welcome to this lecture. This is lecture 10 and that means we are halfway through the course. Uh, it's been a great five weeks everyone. Hope you're all learning a lot and hopefully you've applied some of the knowledge you've learned through this course to some small project you may have started yourself. So on Monday we talked about using git which is retrieving a parameter from the from the URL. Today we're going to talk about post, which are, they're kind of like get parameters, but they're invisible to the URL. But the server is able to process them and PHP can read them. So let's jump right into things. Like, po like get, post is also an array. So we're going to be using the same way of accessing a parameter using that array dereferencing we learned with the square brackets. So to start things off, let's just create a form. Now on Monday we created just, just a regular form that just was two form tags here and then we had we had an input, a text, and then there was a submit button. So we have this this easy form here. So if we were to go to our page here you, we would just see this form. Okay. And if we were to hit submit, you would see it's being passed to the URL. But using post, we want to be able to hide this from the URL, so it kind of looks a little prettier and neater when the user goes ahead and clicks submit. So in, in the, inside the form tag here, the first the opening tag, instead of just keeping it form, we're going to add a new uh, an HTML parameter called method. And we're going to say method equals post. So now, if I hit submit, you're going to see, even though I'm clicking this, nothing's happening. That's because post, it just submits to the file, and everything is processed in the background. So above this, P, above this HTML block, I'm just going gonna, gonna to put print R, and I'm going to put post. So if I refresh the page without some anything, you can see it's just an empty array. But if I click submit, you're going to see now that name variable pops in there. And if I were to add a value ABC, now we have name is set to the value of ABC. Awesome. Now, on Monday, we decided to leave off a name on the submit button. But today we're going to head and throw a name equals submit on this submit button to show you Post can send multiple things in here. So now if I click the submit button, you can see submit has the value of submit. We're going to want to be able to use these to make sure the form is processed correctly. So what we want to check here, we talked about using is set and empty. And in this case, when we want to see if the form is submitted by that submit button, we just need to check to see if it's set first. We don't need to check if it's empty. We don't really care about the value that submit has. As long as that submit button was pressed, we know the user clicked the right button. So now let's just jump into some PHP code here. So I'm not going to say if is set post submit. So that means that form was submitted. So I can go ahead and I'll echo form was submitted. So now if I hit submit, it's going to say form was submitted, but if I don't, it's not submitted. So there's no text going to be shown except for that HTML we've already written. Now, now here's where we're going to use the empty. We're going to try to get this value of name. So I'm going to write name next to it, just so we know what we're looking at. This is the person's name. And here, we would want to say if not empty post name so instead of git we're writing post so it's practically the same way it's just a different variable just the variable name cool awesome so if empty post name not empty sorry then we have a name else we can go ahead and echo you must supply a name awesome so if I hit submit it's gonna say oh, you must supply a name but if I type something in we're going to get no message because obviously this name 
parameter here, this input box, has some value. So now, why don't we go ahead and echo out welcome, and then a comma, and then like we used before, we're going to use HTML entities again on post name, like that. And so we can refresh. Let's put an ABC. It's going to say welcome ABC. Why don't we change that to Marcus? Welcome Marcus. Welcome students. Awesome. Cool. So that's 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 the pretty basics of using post. You know, very simple stuff. But how about if we wanted to have like checkboxes or something? So let's let's create a dialog here that says check your favorite search engines. So now we'll go ahead and create some checkboxes. And I'm setting the name of these checkboxes to we're going to call it engine. But after that engine, we're going to have an open and a close square bracket. You'll see why we did that. And then we say value. Okay, we'll say Google. So this one is for Google. And then a break. And we'll just copy this a few times. We'll do it three times. We'll have, we'll have Yahoo. And then we'll have uh, Bing. Why not? So now if we refresh here, whoops, you can see, check your favorite search engines. So, duh, duh, duh. oh, we forgot to take out the code we had before. So we're still using this if is set post submit to verify that the user has submitted the button by clicking it, or by sending a post request, which we'll actually learn about in the upcoming week when we use uh, curl. Now, I'm going to go ahead and print out, print our post again, just so you can see what's going on. So I'm just going to hit submit. So nothing's being passed here. But now if I click check the box next to Google and hit submit, you can see engine is now an array. So if I can check Google, Yahoo, and Bing, you can see that engine maps to an array of Google, Yahoo, and Bing. So if we didn't put the square brackets there and, and did it. Only the last value that was checked will be submitted. So using the square brackets in HTML like we are doing right now, it indicates that we are expecting multiple values. So we want to be able to use those multiple values when we process our script. So, so now we have this engine array so what we want to check, since we know it's going to be an array, first we just want to check to see if is set post engine. And it's, it's, it's just engine, not engine open close square bracket. So else, if it's not set echo, please select at least one search engine. So let's see how that works out right now. So if I hit submit, oh, Please select at least one search engine. But now if I choose at least one Google, that message is going to be gone. Okay, so we have this if block here. And now inside it, we want to process the, the, the search engines that were checked. So since it's an array, we can use that for each loop we learned. And you know, loop through the search engines that were checked. So now we'll say echo you selected, and then I'll put a break, and then I'll use a for each. So for each, and then I'm just going to use post engine as engine. So I'm creating this variable called engine that's going to be used inside of this for each loop. And now I will echo, remember you don't want to trust the user, oops, spelled that wrong, HTML entities of engine and a break. Concatenated together. So now it's going to say you selected blah, blah, blah. So if hit submit, oh, got to select at least one. So if we select Google, you selected Google. Let's try Google and Yahoo. You selected Google and Yahoo. Nice. How about Google and Bing? Nice. How about all three? 
Cool. Now, since this post engine is an array, we can we can sort it if we wanted to. So sort post engine like this. And now if I go ahead and select this, it'll be in alphabetical order, Bing, Google, Yahoo. So basically post and get are these two super arrays and the values that you can pass to them can be pretty much anything. So in this case we're passing an array and PHP knows it's an array so we can use it as an array. Very simple. So let's go back to um, the name example we were using. So let's go ahead and recreate that. Okay, and then inside of our PHP, we're going to want to make sure it's not empty again, so, so if it's not empty, else, please supply a name. Now, since we have this, this post name uh, variable, we can use it in an if statement, or a switch statement, something like that. Okay, so let's do a switch statement. So switch post name. Okay, and what should the cases be? Case, uh, we'll go Marcus, and then we'll break it. And then case Bob, okay, break it. And let's do one more, case uh, Amanda. And then a default case. Invalid name supplied. Okay. So if I just typed in ABC now, it's going to say invalid name supplied. But if I were to type in Marcus, we're going to get nothing because we haven't specified what we're going to do under this Marcus case. So echo. Hello, Professor. For Marcus. And Bob, let's say he's the TA. Hello, Mr. TA. Okay. And say Amanda is a student. Echo. Hello, student. Okay. So now if I typed in Marcus again, we have hello, professor. We typed in Bob. Hello, Mr. TA. And we type in Amanda. Hello, student. Now what happens if I capitalize Marcus? Invalid name. We're going to want to go with lowercase. So what we can do, we can automatically make it a lowercase name by using that string to lower function we, we learned about in when we discussed strings. So I can switch string to lower of this post name variable. So now if I typed in Marcus in whatever case, it's going to always map to the lowercase value of Marcus. So post and get, they're pretty powerful. You're going to be using them a lot if you're going to be creating any PHP applications like we are. And you want to make sure you use them right. Security is going to be your number one concern in the long run. So I believe for next week we talk about a project that we might be doing, which would be verifying um, or giving access to a login or some kind of page that is, that is protected by a password or something. And we, we know the knowledge of how to check if two things are equal. We know how to use post. We know how to use get. We know how to use a lot of the string functions, a lot of the array functions. We know a lot up to this point where we can be able to create something uh, so dynamic like that. So, play around with the post. Play around with the get. Get comfortable using them. Um, and just... Be ready to actually create something that you, you can show off. You can show somebody and tell them, oh, look, I made this. They probably won't understand what's behind it, but they're going to see something you created and you'll know how it works. And now you'll be knowing how other websites work, like Facebook or any other major site that uses PHP. There's a lot out there. But Facebook is a pretty big example since they started off using PHP. And so the login thing they use, you know, enter your username, enter your password. Hmm, that's PHP. 
stuff like that you are now going to be seeing that every time you click some submit button every time you fill out a form it's all going to be processed by something in the server that uses a post or a get request and now you know how to use them so I look forward to introducing this project to you next week and uh, I'll talk to you then